Approximately one in a hundred babies is born with a congenital heart defect, which makes it the most common congenital disease known. Varying from mild to fatal defects, these heart diseases find their origin in both genetic and environmental factors. Yeah, the formation of the heart is a very fascinating research uh, topic. I mean, you have to think of that uh, just a few cells in the embryo will, will form the heart and it will form a very complex three-dimensional structure. Um, and and that, that always goes right. But in congenital heart defects, so babies that are born with a congenital heart defect, uh, there things go wrong. And we actually, we know that genes play a role in this, but we know very little about which genes play a role in causing these congenital heart defects. So we work with zebrafish as a model. Zebrafish is great to work with because it's a vertebrate and because its genome is completely sequenced. So we can use a number of methods thanks to that. We can use a knockout method in which we mutate a gene of our choice and we see what consequences this has on embryonic development or we can do forward genetics. So in forward genetics we screen randomly for mutants with the congenital heart defects and our goal then is to uncover novel genes involved in cardiovascular development. So the heart starts out as a simple linear heart tube and after that it starts falling and it falls in a certain direction and that's under the influence of the left-right axis. So the heart will be an asymmetric organ positioned on the left side of the body. Yeah, several things can go wrong. Uh, first of all there are mutants in which the position of the heart is different. So instead of on the left side, it's on the right side of the body. And this is actually not a problem as long as all the other organs are reversed in their orientation as well. It can also happen that only a part of the heart is mirror image or is not completely rotated. And that um, is a very severe congenital heart defect because the, the, the arteries basically, they don't connect properly to the heart. And so there is less circulation uh, possible. So these babies, when they are born, they don't get enough oxygen and they slowly turn blue because of that. And these babies, they need surgery uh, in the first weeks uh, after they're, they're born. Nowadays, we screen for conditions like these with the 20 weeks echo. So a team of surgeons is at hand when the baby is born. Of course, that helps saving lives, but it also creates a new group of patients that will need treatment during the rest of their lives. So we recently discovered in zebrafish a signaling system which induces a barrier at the embryonic midline. So when the left-right axis is formed in zebrafish, there's a specific growth factor which is expressed in the left part of the embryo. And this midline barrier is very important for preventing diffusion of this factor from the left side of the embryo to the right side of the embryo, which is essential for ensuring correct asymmetric development of the body. So with our findings, uh, we know better how the heart forms during uh, embryonic development. And that's one thing. But the other thing is also uh, that we will be able to identify causes for congenital heart defects with our research. Yeah, we know very little uh, at the moment about the genes and the pathways that play a role in folding of this uh, uh, complex and asymmetric uh, heart organ. Um, if, if we would know which molecular processes are required uh, for generating the mechanical force into the tissue that makes it uh, fold in its proper way, uh, that would be great. And, and this has a wider implications because in biomechanical engineering, uh, we actually don't know how molecular processes induces specific forces and shape the organ um, um, under lab conditions. And that's, that's what we would like to know.